Welcome back to what is part six in this FXS Lowrider shovel head engine repair. And in this section, we have the rebuild of an SNS Shorty E carburetor. I've left the filter cover here because a lot of times you'll show people the carb and they'll go, you know, what's that? But everybody instantly recognizes the cover. Everybody wants the cover on their bike. They want people to see they got the carb. I'm I'm indifferent to this. If my bike came with a CV carburetor, I would have been fine with that too. This to me is more of a carb that would have been uh, well suited to the drag strip and not for everyday driving. This is sort of Wisconsin's answer to the Milwaukee sewer pipe of yesteryear. But if you're just getting into carbs, I don't think there's a more simpler carb for you to get into for your shovel head than this thing. There's there's only a handful of parts to this. Very easy to work on and clean and set up. Do me a favor, hit that like button below. It helps me out a lot when you do. Subscribe button and notification will let you know when new movies come out. Link over here will take you to the first episode in the series. If you want to catch up, if you don't care and you just want to know how to take a part and rebuild an SNS Shorty E carburetor, then hey, that's your prerogative too. Well, let's get started. Stuff I need include flat head screwdriver with a somewhat robust tip, half inch socket, 5 8 socket, ratchet, that's about it. Also highly recommended at a bare minimum is going to be the basic rebuild kit for this carburetor. If you have gas in your carburetor, if you pulled it out, this would be an opportune time to open up the bowl here with the 5 8 I don't believe I have any in mine at this point, but I'm just going to open it up for good practice. And we're empty. And we're nasty. But okay. Next, we're going to take off the enrichener here with the half inch. Goes right on top. Spring loaded, as you see. Pull that out. This was ready for cleaning. This is the overflow hose that redirects the fuel. This is mostly broken anyway here. So I'm going to pull this one off mine. The hose itself is still good. So I'm just going to cut the ends and reuse it later. I'm just going to remove this piece we see right here is the accelerator pump pump linkage here this is what pushes down the accelerator pump we're going to remove this now with the correct screwdriver you'll note the screws are not the same size remember that when putting them back in you see a slight difference right here those are the same though. I'm going to give this a light wrap with rubber, not with metal. This metal piece can push through the bottom, come out. This bearing came out of here, and the second bearing came out as well over here. I'll have to get a pick to get the spring out. I'm going to take this rubber seal out. And then this spring, here we go. I'm gonna to need to count the turns on this needle to full seat. So I'm going to mark position on the needle here so I have a reference. And then that reference is gonna be right here. It's good enough, count them out. So here we go. There's one turn. And here's the second line for reference. So it's just under one and a quarter. So I'm going to write that down. Now it's safe to remove it. If you're worried about the market disappearing on this carb, I got it on video. So for me, it's okay. Don't write it on your carb. Nasty. I mean, this bike has had it rough with its problems as of late. Hole's not plugged though. We can see straight through there. Look at that. Dirty but not blocked. Going to unscrew the bowl next. It is these screws here on the bottom. The fourth screw is also used for the accelerator pump, already removed. Once we can feel the seal broken, we're going to lift straight up and out. Just like that. That's good. I can see the gasket is still on there. We put this off to the side. This reveals some more pieces. It might be easier to remove this jet to remove this gasket below. So I'm gonna do that now. Yep. I 
I'll check the fitment of the screwdriver. Yeah, this seems okay for here. That's a good size for that jet. Turn that out. Half inch. We can see straight down in there. That's cleared out. Well, it's definitely seen better days. We'll get her fixed up. <laughs> That's not good. Oop. That's bad. That's bad. That's just stuck. So we're gonna take apart the pieces that hold together the float, the float needle. Looks like this needle has seen better days as well. Take a look at that. That'll be replaced. Also, this rod is covered with debris that'll cause it to bind. This rod will have to be polished to a shine again or replaced. So I want to point that out. The float itself appears to be in good condition. There's nothing wrong with the float per se. It's just going to be cleaned up to remove any debris on it and be put back into service. No problem at all. It'll just be uh, inspected for the height of the fuel level and readjusted if necessary. Nothing more. We're going to take a look at that seat as well. I'm just going to remove this whole assembly from the carb. I'm going to use that 5 eighths to accomplish that task. I've already loosened this to fit it in the shot, but 5 sixteenths. Let's see. This comes out like that. I'll be able to properly clean this and inspect this and make sure this is okay. Should be okay. I'll polish that anyway, the inside race. And then on the bowl, we got this one O-ring take off. This is pressed in this piece, so there really is no further breakdown on this unit this is ready for cleaning on this unit i have to get this rubber piece removed over here and this o-ring from here be cleaning up this face too remove this dust cap for the accelerator pump and that should be yeah that should be about it this is ready for cleaning too now I've got a couple q-tips with metal polish i'm going to polish the inside of this race right here once i polish it i can inspect it make sure there's no gouges or anything in there that's forming and then I'll polish where the seat is for where the rubber on the needle uh, blocks the actual hole on the bottom. There are, are three ends of the needle that's situated here in this brass fitting like that. Over the years, with vibration, it is just slowly worn into the brass. We can see a three silhouettes in there there's one right there just a line and it's very mild but it does tell me that it might be time to think about changing this out it's not a problem yet but it is getting close so maybe this or the next i may just replace this piece and be done with it but clean out the actual seat take a look still using the metal polish and that doesn't look too bad down there just needs a cleaning Again, in the end, this particular piece is not broken, but it has seen better days. This one is about ready to be replaced just for normal wear and vibrations from the motorcycle acting upon it. This is a critical piece because as this starts to get loose, you start to have uh, fuel overfilling in the bowl, cause all sorts of problems from your fuel system all the way through the engine. Every other component of this bike is affected by this failure. Also, another thing to consider is even if the rubber tip is in good condition, if the sides have sufficiently worn down, even when it's seated in there, there may be so much wiggle room because the metal's worn down that it's only gonna get worse and cause further issues. That's something you wanna look at too. When you evaluate this piece, you really wanna replace them when you can. So here, this piece is shined up on the inside. We can see everything's done. The seat inside's now shined up. We're gonna put this back into service. This piece is for the enrichener. I'm gonna do the same thing, polish this up, clean it up. This is another piece cleaned up, but this is no spring chicken. I could still get use out of this, but it's something I want to monitor. You could see as it sits in position, the unbelievable amount of vibration in this motorcycle ultimately causes wear at the seat. And you see that right there, the little halo around there. Still good, but something to monitor. And if it gets worse by the next time this is broken down, I will have to replace this item. But we're going to pull it good, put it in the clean pile. That includes a spring also cleaned up. 
And this top portion, I'm just cleaning out right quick, prevent any binding. So you see that's all cleaned up. The inside especially is polished up, so there won't be any binding. I'll put that off with the enrichener stuff. I want to see what we could do with this right quick, see if this is salvageable. Looks like it's coming up. It's like 10 layers of varnish coming off this pin, and it's mostly off. I got a little bit more work to do. But you could also see how vibration digs in ever so slightly. I don't think this will be a problem though, as long as it's smooth. I'm gonna let it go. In the end, restored to working condition, I'll put that with the finished parts. If I thought it any worse, I would just replace the part, but I think this one's okay. Pull this off here, put that with the old seals, as well as this, because there's a spring under here. There it is. Pull that out. This is going to have to be cleaned as well with the other metal pieces. But again, this is now fully stripped down, ready for cleaning. This bottom piece will have to be washed out. It catches all the sediment from the bottom of the bowl, and then I'll polish the inside of that, so just make sure there's no contaminants in there, and then clean the threads. That's about it for this. So this is now cleaned out. I wanted to make sure all the contaminants were removed. A little polish on the bottom, not that anybody ever see it, but it just lets me know that this was done from far away. This is ready to go on the side under the finished stuff. Rod for the accelerator pump, clean that up right quick. Gonna clean this needle in the spring now. That looks nice. Be cleaning this next, both inside and out. We'll wash it out, we'll see how it looks. Now perfectly clean, both inside and out, all of the ports, and we could see from the top here, the bore inside, nice and smooth, no debris. The bottom, that's ready. Next will be this jet. Next we're gonna clean this piece. The mild degreaser. I'm just gonna see if I could clean this up a bit. I don't want to damage the float. I just want to get the crud off. I feel it getting slimy, so I think it is coming off. This part I'll hit with some metal polish gently. I'll give it a rinse in the sink. So I've washed it off. I'll let it air dry. Put it down here. That part is done. I'm gonna clean this right quick. This is the nozzle for the accelerator pump. Also paying attention right here. This is where the fuel sprays out. We can see that the outside and the nozzle are now cleaned up. The inside will be cleaned up when this whole thing goes in the tank. However, I still want to spray it through with some carb cleaner. Good pattern. So everything seems fine. This tube for the enrichener, I'm gonna clean this tube even though this is going in the tank. All the ports are open, flushed out. It's now ready for the tank. Nice and clean. I'm gonna fill it up with distilled water and leave room for about, I think about 200 milliliters of simple green. Then for added superstition, whatever reason, I always just put a little bit of dish detergent. I don't know why, I always have. I'm gonna let this come to temperature just sitting here by itself. I'm gonna turn it on and bring this up to uh, 70 degrees centigrade. Let these come to temperature, sit here for a while before I start. These are now come to temperature. I'm gonna start them on the first of two 20 minute intervals. Time's up, we'll see what we got. Make no mistake, these are hot. I don't feel like touching it. This just could be for an inspection. We'll evaluate, see how the metal's doing. Maybe we'll do another go. As far as the aluminum, I see no negative reaction. Always looking out for that. 
seems okay. We had all that nastiness on the bottom of the bowl. Definitely took that off. I may let it just sit one more round since it's definitely not hurting anything on this piece. See, this piece is good for another round. See a lot of that deposits are collecting in these surfaces. Very good. See, these components cleaned up really nice. All these, the throttle works right here. All that garbage is out. Take a look inside here. Very good. I mean, this sludge will be washed out, but it's detached, so. Yeah, one more time, 20 more minutes. We'll see what we got. Okay, we're finished with round two. This is gonna be it. Shut off the heater, the pulleys out. I'm gonna let them come to room temperature before I rinse them off. I don't wanna shock the metal. I'm flushing the parts in distilled water, get the uh, remainder of the detergent out. I don't want any detergent in there. And I did wait for the parts to cool so they don't crack under stress. I'm gonna refill this distilled water, do this one again. Now I'm gonna blow everything out. So I've got all the clean parts on the table. We're gonna get right back into reassembly. I'm gonna open up this rebuild kit. I've lubricated the seal. I'm gonna go and put this back into the float bowl now. I'm gonna screw it in by hand and then tighten it with the ratchet. I pull from the bag, the new needle, grab the rod that was cleaned up and I'll put it through. Hang the new needle on. Drop it into place. Get our set screw. Then I'll snug it slightly. Now we'll check, see if it sticks like before. And it does not. Nice and smooth now. Perfect. With regard to the float height, I wanna point out these numbers right here. 1 8 of an inch to 3 16 of an inch is also 3.175 to 4.76 millimeters. And what that value is, when you raise this float all the way up, even the compression of the spring in here, and you measure this piece where the gasketed surface would be, it should fall between that range. And mine sits right there at about 3.17 over here on the low side, an eighth. I look on here, I see it's just past 3.1. That's just fine by me. If need be, I would take this out and I would bend that tab accordingly to set the new distance for the float height very gently and in small increments to bring it into this range as specified by s, &S. This was the old torn dust cap for the accelerator pump. And here's a new one that comes with the kit. So I'm just going to put that in right over here. This snaps over that brass fitting. Just have to work it over and push it in position with the screwdriver. And there we go, that's good just like that. Gonna screw this emulsion tube back in. Just give it a little bit of a tighten. I mean a little bit. Just give it just a little bit, just like that. Just to seat it and the jet. Give it a little turn just to make sure it's tight just give a little twist just a little tighten that's it I'll put this jet back in again with a screwdriver give it a little tighten and that's it on the top side I'll put this enrichener down here with the spring followed by its cover make sure the spring doesn't bind and start turning it by hand all the way to full seat Drop the half inch on top of it. Give it a gentle tighten. That's it. I'll test it. No binding. Snaps back shut. Don't snap it back, but just check that it springs back nicely. Bring our needle back into full seat. Checking from under to make sure if I feel any binding. Now I'm going to bring it out one and a quarter turns. 
that's one and a quarter and then back to the second line and that's where it originally was before i started the disassembly it's worth pointing out after cleaning the carb like this there's a good chance that i will need to readjust this needle once i get it back in the bike but this is a good starting point i'm ready to put this big gasket on now only fits one way i just have to make sure i work it over this one in particular it's a tight fit everything else goes rather easy so once i'm sure confident that it fits over that one nice we'll work it down to the bottom out Again, there's another piece that goes around over here. Taking my time. There we go. See that? Just fine. Within the rebuild kit, there are a couple of O-rings. One of them is this medium-sized one here. And we can see that it fits right over this piece. This is the accelerator pump. O-ring is lightly lubricated. Everything is then joined together carefully. Uh, keeping in mind all these pieces that interconnect, including this jet this tube and that o-ring also make sure that o-ring doesn't bind on the gasket you see everything fits really nice hold the carb like this and i'll put in three of the screws and they don't have to be torqued down it just needs to hold everything together since this is not part of the kit i'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on this o-ring and then i'm going to put this cap back on Next will be the diaphragm for the accelerator pump. There's only one direction of the diaphragm that neatly fits within this machined area. So we could see how that would go in, like that. We would take the rod and slide it down, turning this around, make sure it came safely through the other side without poking the material that we've just replaced. There we go, through the material, butted up against the mechanism that pushes it down. The rod is now seated just about flush in there. The final pieces are contained in the package within the package to ensure they don't get lost because they're very small. We can see that. I'm going to open this up now. This is going to be the final portion of the assembly. First thing I'm going to do is drop that little spring down the hole. The spring came out of that package. The package also contains two bearings and two O-rings. I'm going to slip the bearings in now. There's one. The other one sits atop that spring, like that. I've lightly lubricated the O-rings and put them in place. Knowing now what direction this rubber cap is supposed to go in the upward position, I'm going to place this spring on top. Looking from the side is it's easiest to do this way. I'm going to negotiate this piece on. We're going to want the seal around this large ring as well as the o-ring over here the other o-ring will sit flush that one's easy and the ball bearing will be in the center as i lower this piece down i'm going to check to make sure obviously that the ball bearings are in place i'm going to push down over here first just to make sure they're seated this part will deform as it's dropped down and what i'm going to do is i'm going to push up on this to seat everything up in place so when i do that you see I'm pushing the seal up into position using that rod. The seal is now seated in there and I slowly lowered the whole thing all at once into place. And then I can now let go of that rod, pull the screwdriver out, and everything's now seated. Now I can put the screws in. And that's how you get that piece in without deforming it. The final screw also serves as the screw to hold the bowl on as well as this accelerator pump diaphragm piece. So you can see this assembly is fully completed now. This is the o-ring that goes up here. I'm going to wait until the carburetor is installed to put this on the carb. It's going to go back in the packaging. That also includes the gasket for the other side of the carb which obviously will go in at installation time. The carb can now be checked for leaks. The float level can be checked. Note that if the carb is open for any reason that this screw would be opened over here, the silver one, and the three way down here, these two would be left alone. There's no need to open up these two to access the float bowl cover. And that concludes the video on this SNS Super E Shorty rebuild. I hope you found this video enjoyable, educational, helpful. When the next video comes out on this uh, shovel head 
repair series, I will post a link to the video up here. Hit that like button down here below, it helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?